So we're gonna show you uh, this wild gilt head bream. These are fantastic. We see more and more every year. As you can see, they've got some really nice colors on them. Don't be uh, confused with the supermarket variety of these. The ones you get in the supermarket are called gilt head bream, uh, but they're farmed. These ones have had to fend for themselves. They've got a lot more body to them, a lot more flavor. And as you'll see in a minute, the, the color of the flesh will be completely different. Really worth trying. If you see a Cornish gilt head wild sea bream, give it a go. With the bream, you want to scale them before you do any filleting on them. Even if you're going to cook them whole, you're best to get those scales off uh, and then the skin will crisp up nicely. So we're going to do that now. We're going to start off at the towel, work our way around to the head. Did it in a sink full of water. The scales stay contained in your sink so they won't go up your walls. If you haven't got anything like that, you can use the back of a knife. That works equally as well. I'm going to give that a little rinse. It's easier to fill it after it's done. So again, we're going to take, we're going to fill it this one off. We're going to take the head off. We're going to go behind, behind the back of the head and the fin. A bit of a V. Like that. We get rid of that. Sometimes that can be a little bit messy. That bit. See if it is. Just give it a little rinse. Okay, then we're going to go in here at the back and we're going to be using, again, about that much of your knife. All the way down to the tail. Same with most other fish, you're going to lift it up as you go, looking down. Be careful of those spikes. Your first fillet so again you can just trim any belly fat off of there very very minimal on these because they're wild they're not your farmed ones so there shouldn't be any fat on there at all you've got a nice fillet to do the other side we give that a little rinse it's a bit mucky we're gonna go in back there which is about halfway down and again we're using about that much of the knife spin the knife around to the tail That bone there is pretty thick, so you want to try and get through that. Okay. And again, you can just take that bit off. Just give you that bit. And any bit of the back there where the fin might be. You get your two fillets. Once you've got your bream filleted, or any other fish you're doing, another way to get the pin bones out, other than cutting them, is to use a, smell, a pair of small pliers. So locate them with your thumb or your finger, you can feel them, and they just run along the edge there. And if you get hold of them nice and firm, you can normally just, just pull them, and out they come. Very straightforward. There's normally anywhere between sort of eight and a dozen bones along here once they're out it gets them out without losing any of the fish so if you've got an expensive fish it's a good way of taking the bones out without losing any meat and also if there's no bones in it, it makes the whole eating experience so much better there we go so just go over it a couple of times and make sure you've got all the bones out there we go and if you haven't got any of these you can always use tweezers or a very small pair of pliers Anything that's going to get a grip on those bones just to get them out. And I'm just feeling there, there's nothing left in there at all. 